uh, analysis of sound art installation and the site specific. So um, I think perhaps our first challenge here is to is, is simply diversity of types of installation practice that exists and uh, how that might involve sound. Um, how, for example, can we compare um, this, in which mm -hmm. the sound component is deployed over multiple loudspeakers, uh, follows an explicit narrative and is presented in a gallery. Uh, this, in which the sound content of the work is reducible according to traditional homework analysis, but isn't really designed to be engaged with in that way. So, spatial. Yeah. This one, in which mm -hmm. the sound component is a product of a kinetic sculptural process, uh, still gallery exhibited, um, but a uh, very, very different thing. This, in which the sound component is narrative and allied with audiovisual content. This, in which the sonic component is a guide through space and time and a historical record of a particular period. Uh, this, in which the sound component is the product of a journey of a recording device through space and time and is therefore very linear. Uh, this one, in which the sound component involves the sonification of the non-sounding environment in real time outside the gallery space indeed involving extensive uh, spatial exploration. But again, in real time, not, following, uh, not, not a directed narrative. This one, in which the sound component is a product of synchronous presentation or networking of multiple sonic spaces. Um, so there's, there's a, a, quite a diversity of, of, of stuff. Oh, sorry. And there's this one. Uh, sonic content involves, involves entirely uh, a product of environmental sound and fine uh, and this one, a uh, simple sound component is made visible by means of cymatics. So it's an area that covers quite extensive ground. Um, and uh, Alan Licht, in a, a recent article, identifies sound art as encompassing ambient music, architecture, soundscape, sculpture, and even absence of sound, among other things. And of course, that includes installation art. So in the first instance, we're often looking at work which is transmedia, possibly even multimedia. Um, and the sound component can't be isolated from the other media represented in the artwork. Um, and the sound component may be, well, it will be subsidiary to or a byproduct of other aspects of the work. So the first question might be, um, what can be gained from the application of existing analy analytical models to, you know, in terms of uh, electroacoustic uh, models? For, uh, for analysing uh, sound art installation practice. Some are relevant, perhaps, some are less so. Um, and the second question might be concerning the adoption of analytical models from other arts media or artistic media practice uh, that might help in, in that process. So that's, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, is uh, in terms of, well, this is a model for the analysis of uh, installation, which is one that covers site-specific installation art in a public setting. Uh, but as other sorry, aspects of it are relevant to installation art in any context, uh, as well as to sound art in general. Um, it presents some other issues that might concern us. So critically, the model shows us that uh, the insertion of an installation in a public space creates a system that has implications well beyond the limits of the form of the installation itself. Uh, the installation is identified as the motor of a dynamic process in space, which consists of space, time and social, so this sort of swirling quality um, conveys the dynamic process. Um, and all of these need to be explored in combination, both in relation to the installation itself, so how they apply to the middle, um, and how they relate to uh, the whole, uh, to, to each other, in order to understand the whole system. So context is critical, um, and context may well have informed the installation's development, uh, assuming it's site specific or it's site sensitive. Uh, but in any event, the installation will very definitely inform the context. Um, so there's a kind of potential feedback process going on. Um, around this engine, so in the great bit around the outside, uh, there is the observer or the commentator frame. Uh, the installation inevitably involves a relationship with the individual as observer. Indeed, the spectator is in some way regarded as integral to the completion of any installation. But who is the spectator? Uh, in this case, uh, Jesperson's proposing one uh, who is familiar with the discourse surrounding installation art and therefore an informed observer, uh, but presenting a work in the public domain will inevitably leave it open to scrutiny by a variety of interested or less interested parties. 
So while retrieving data from uninformed listening is fairly limited in formal analysis, it is perhaps critical in the analysis of public artworks, which inevitably involve the uninitiated viewer listening experiencer. Um, so, for example, we might consider space uh, as it relates to the installation, um, the amount of three-dimensional physical space occupied by the work, so how much space it takes up, or how, in the case of sound, that sound is distributed from the work. Um, but equally, how does the installation relate to the context of place or site, along with all of its uses and its history, which takes into account space in relation to time, as well as the social context. So again, it's a relationship between all three. Equally, we need to consider times that exist in relation to the materials, um, so, sorry, time in relation to the materials, so the discourse of the installation itself, but also time as it relates to the space and the context, so when the installation is taking place historically, or in relation to particular circumstances, so a particular time of day or whatever, um, or in relation to other activities, or, indeed, in relation to the observer, um, whose navigation of or experience of the work is conducted over a time frame that is different to that of the work itself. <coughs> um, and the installation in relation to time, space and the social combined. So the installation is a, an intervention in an already existing space uh, and the installation affects the historicity of the space. <coughs> uh, there is a before and after of the installation um, and the spatiality of the space is affected too. The orientation of the space might change, the user's relation to the site might be altered, um, and finally the socia sociality of the site, which can be affected in terms of new, new social possibilities being presented by uh, the uh, installation. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a very, as I say, dynamic system. Um, one more issue that remains uh, is to consider what exactly is there to analyse of the work. In other words, does the installation still exist to be analysed? Uh, the materials probably will be, um, but uh, if the installation is temporary, then the uh, time, the space, the social and the commentators will be absent. Um, so, uh, since much installation art is temporary, ideally it should be accomplished while the work remains in situ, but this isn't always practical, obviously. Um, and uh, in order to facilitate comparative analysis, it would arguably be necessary to have a robust a consistent methodology of installation preservation or documentation. Um, and of course, the anal analytical process might be part of that process of documentation. Um, and this isn't so much an analytical tool as a, as a condition. Um, we might note different experiences of space and time depending on whether the observer is experiencing or analysing the work in real time or retrospectively. In the former case, we might say that space becomes time in the navigation of the work. In the latter, time becomes space in the respect, retrospective view of the whole. <coughs> so, um, so I'm, I'm looking for, sort of, uh, I proposed the first two earlier, um, a robust integrated multidisciplinary approaches which encompass space, time and social. Um, looking at who is listening um, and uh, when is the analysis being conducted.